Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with the Movement System. In this video, I wanna teach you how to write a strength and conditioning program. So it can be really overwhelming to write the strength and conditioning program, so I don't wanna just jump right into all the advanced stuff about periodization and autoregulation and all of these terms that will confuse you. Instead, in this video, I wanna give you a basic template so that you can get started and then guide you with five steps on exactly where you should start and the things that you need to think about. Let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so the first step to writing a strength and conditioning program is starting with a template. If you just start on a blank Excel sheet and you have to figure it out from scratch, it's gonna be really overwhelming. That's why I'm giving you this template and it's linked in the description below. This is yours to just download and modify however you want. You can put your own business name on it, you can put your own color scheme on it, but I want you to have a template so that way you can get started. There are some other places you can write a program aside from Excel. For example, you can use True Coach or Train Heroic or Strength Coach Pro, which are all software programs to write a strength and conditioning program in. But the biggest thing is that you wanna have a template to stay organized and get started. All right, so now that you have your template, let's move on to step number two, which is doing a needs analysis on your client or athlete. By the way, for your convenience, I have put all of these steps onto a guide that you can download in the description below. Some things that you might wanna include in a needs analysis include client goals, their recent training status, their injury history, as well as their current strength, power, or endurance. Maybe you wanna test their body composition. These are all options for things that you might include in a needs analysis, but you wanna think about your individual client and their goals and what you would need to measure to help them reach those goals. Once you do this needs analysis, typically in the form of a movement assessment or just the first session with a client, then you can move on to step number three. All right, so for step number three, we're gonna determine training frequency. This is something that you wanna determine based on the client's previous training status as well as their goals. Some options for training frequency include an upper-lower split done four times a week, a full-body conditioning workout done four times a week, full-body training three times a week, or a push-pull leg split done six times per week. You really wanna prioritize adherence here and make sure that the frequency that you're choosing works well for your clients. You also wanna make sure that you're choosing a frequency that is recoverable based on the client's previous training status. If they haven't done any training at all, it would be irresponsible to jump into one hour, six times a week of really hard training because that's just setting the client up for risk of injury. And that leads us to point number four, which is to determine an appropriate starting volume for your client. In order to determine what's an appropriate volume for your client to work at, you have to consider what they're chronically adapted to. So we would consider this their chronic workload or what their body is capable of doing right now. Typically, we don't wanna increase this by more than about 30%. And there's a lot of research that indicates that if we double, for example, what our client's currently doing, so say they're only doing two times a week training and we just bump them right up to four, that puts them at higher risk of injury. If we do that, we're gonna to need to dial back the intensity or dial back the volume of the training session to make sure that the volume of work that they're doing only increases by about 10 to 30% every few weeks. Doing this will not sacrifice results. People think that if you just jump into doing six, seven times a week training, you're gonna get better results, but that's not necessarily true because if you're setting yourself up for overtraining or risk of injury, you're not gonna be making progress long-term. You also wanna leave room for clients to progress. If you go from two times a week right to six or seven times a week, they can't progress over time. By building that up slowly, you're gonna actually be safer and get better results. And that leads us into point number five, which is determining your periodization strategy and progression schemes. So this is where we start to take the client's long-term goals into account and actually structure blocks of training month to month that can lead our client to optimal progress long-term. This is an advanced strategy, and this puts you at a level above personal trainers or fitness professionals who just write one workout at a time and do random things. You could decide to use an undulating periodization protocol or a linear periodization protocol. You may choose to progress intensity week to week, or you may choose to progress volume week to week. There are a lot of options for this long-term progression, and there's a lot to learn about this. It can feel overwhelming to try to learn about progression schemes and periodization, but it doesn't have to be. You just need a system. And that's actually why I built Program Design 101. Program Design 101 is my step-by-step -step system for helping you write effective strength conditioning programs. I've analyzed hundreds of research studies 
put together great example programs and condense this all into an eight hour course that's designed to take you from not confident writing strength conditioning programs to actually confidently writing a portfolio of great programs to use for your clients and athletes. Even if you've never written a strength conditioning program before, this course is designed to start with writing a strength conditioning session, then writing a strength conditioning week, and then writing a block of training. And by the end of Program Design 101, you're gonna have a hypertrophy program that you wrote, a strength program, a power program, an endurance program that you can then go and give to your athletes. This is designed to work step by step to help you learn strength conditioning program design. You'll start by getting a video that covers the information, for example, about hypertrophy programming. I'll tell you the important things about volume, intensity, frequency for hypertrophy training, and then you'll immediately go into an assignment. I give you a template as well as an example program to reference as you build your own hypertrophy program. By the end of the course, you'll be confidently writing great strength conditioning programs for your clients. I think this course is gonna be really helpful for seeing how I do it and understanding why you make certain programming decisions as well as having a system for building great programs. And it's approved for eight hours of NSCA CEUs to help you maintain your certification. If that's something you're interested in, go ahead and click the link in the description below to download this guide for free and I'll send you more information about Program Design 101. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one.